Okay, so now let's get into really the specifics, if that's okay. Sure. Um, technology and operations and what it means in this new digital world. So let's go into the essential tools and software. What would I need to get started? Okay, so first of all, I just want to know, let everybody know that if they go to the AAERT Best Practices Guide and they purchase that, this is all outlined um, in detail oh, great. as far as microphones and, and reporting software. But to start out, you're going to need a, a purchase a recording software or get a subscription to a recording software. You want to make sure that this has playback feature, annotations, and timestamps that match. Um, that Those are the essential functions. You want to make sure your mix, you have good mixers, microphones, and backup recorders. Oh, um, the backup. Backup have recorders. Backup. Are, you have to have a backup recorder. Hopefully, you're never going to need it, but you have to have a backup recorder um, because things break or human error happens. For sure. Um, and then you need to have considerations of what kind of jobs you're covering. You're going to cover only virtual proceedings or you're going to do virtual and in-person. And then are you providing the hosting for it or is the client providing the hosting? Where does that ethically sit in navigating that for your business? Absolutely. Absolutely. So I think those are the, the main things that you have to consider. Um, but like I said, I think I really would encourage you to go ahead and purchase that best practices guide and it'll give you all of these these considerations in detail. Okay, so we're going to need recording software, hardware requirements, virtual or in-person. That's kind of the gist of what the digital is going to be doing for sure. you. I think it's really important to hone in on something that we mentioned previously, and that's going to be the advantages of either doing all in-house or outsourcing some of your work. And this is sort of the critical moment for the court reporting agency and what they need to decide. So when you look at that for the production and workflow, what are the benefits of outsourcing versus keeping some of it in-house? So I have experience with both, with having an in-house team and working with a third-party vendor. In my experience, it's going to be much easier to work with a third-party vendor. You're saving on labor costs. Um, you don't have to hire supervisors. You don't have to worry about scheduling. Um, you don't have to worry about people not having enough work, having too much work, because basically in plain English, it's not your problem. You're passing this all, you're paying for that service. And it, the overhead itself goes down. Um, it, you, you can't just take a page rate that somebody's charging you and say, oh, I have this individual transcriber who charges me a dollar less. You have to take all these things into consideration, the management of them, the scheduling of them, and the availability of them. So you get to scale with ease too when you make it somebody else's problem. And I'm sure that's something you experienced in past lives is, oh my goodness, I got so much work. I have to figure out how to handle this quickly. And that's... Absolutely. And if you have an in-house team, you're going to have people complaining about being too busy or not having enough work. It's, as we said before, it's feast or famine in this business. And I think everybody knows that. And that's what you're going to have to deal with. I love the way that you phrase it as, it's not my problem. I'm just going to focus on growing and scaling my business. Absolutely. Absolutely. It takes a huge portion of it off your plate. I mean, I still would recommend having QC team. You have to have some sort of QC in place for your own business, but it's just a fraction of having a whole in-house transcription team. It's it's difficult. It's it's like a whole other division of your company that you have sure. to add on. And I'll dive into QC and what that means. So for the court reporting agency, you essentially want somebody confidence monitoring the transcripts coming in. Does that mean that they have to review everyone word for word with audio. Not if you found a really viable and solid vendor. You should be able to trust that that product. You do want to routinely check it over, though, to make sure you're getting what you're paying for. Additionally, you want somebody that understands if your digital reporters are not providing ample and sustainable audio to your vendor. That's going to be something to navigate. So rather than in the in-house model where you're hiring multiple transcriptionists, a transcription manager, an HR professional, a training professional, sure. you really have one source of truth that's going to work hand in hand with your outsource vendor and your scheduler for the digital reporters to go out to kind of monitor and navigate that workflow. Absolutely. What are the questions I should be asking of a transcription vendor? Let's start with how empowering it is for you to say, what question should I be asking? What you should not do is just look at the offering and the contract in front of you from the potential vendor and say, okay, I'm good to go. Ask the questions because there's a lot of minutia that goes into the contract in front of you. Am I getting proper security compliance with it? And what does that look like? Are they maintained and kept? And how does that impact my workflow as it enters their ecosystem and comes back into mine? 
they should be able to expressly and immediately answer those questions. The other thing you want to look at is, do their transcriptionists have non-disclosure agreements that ties back into the security measurement? What that ensures is anything that you're providing is kept private within that ecosystem and protected with trusted transcriptionists. You additionally want to see if they specialize in legal transcription. Transcription is actually a very broad, very wide ranging industry. You want to make sure that someone understands colloquy and Q&A, and this is not their first rodeo with legal transcription, that they understand what you're asking for when you ask for it. So the other thing you want to consider is data sovereignty. What that means for you is making sure it stays in the U.S. if that's what your client requires. Your company that you're picking should be able to ensure that that's an option for you. Absolutely. And I do know that a lot of contracts with the federal government especially require that the data be kept on a server within the U.S. and not leave the U.S. Right. And that's what you gain by asking these questions. Absolutely. Is you're able to confidently bid on new RFPs. You know where the work is going and it's upheld by your trusted vendor that you're going with. In addition to where this workflow goes and who is touching your sensitive material, how it's delivered, you also, in my opinion, want to look for something that if you need it for your more sensitive contracts is customizable. A good vendor out there is going to have a pretty stable product that is built by industry experts that's industry viable instantly. But if the customization is important to you, it should be available. Is that something that you experienced? Absolutely, because you'll find that there are plenty of RFPs and you have to say that you'll do it exactly the way they want. The cover pages or parentheticals, you have to do it the way that they want it. So you need somebody who's going to work with you and what your specific client wants. How does customer support for you play into your ability to pick a transcription vendor? It is absolutely essential it is not something that you can even bend on that you're able to contact somebody. I've been in the position of trying to get in touch with a transcriber or a, a transcription vendor and not have somebody to get in touch with. Um, it is absolutely essential that you're able to get in touch with someone to communicate issues, errors. Um, you could find out that you are missing some audio, for instance, and you need to get that to somebody. Or you could have somebody call you at the last minute and say, oh, even though we told you we needed this in two weeks, we need it Monday, and it's Friday afternoon. So you have to be able to get in touch with somebody to to make your own workflow run smoothly. I think that ties back into whatever vendor you're picking and testing, this is an extension of your business. So your pain point should also be theirs. If you're getting the phone call from the judge at 10 o'clock at night on a Friday, it's also their phone call. And you work together to navigate that going Absolutely. forward. Absolutely. You're looking for a partner, not just a vendor. Sure. So keeping in mind everything that we've just gone through in the past three modules, how can effective change management be implicated? Let's first look at what change management is. It's affecting the impact that digital reporting can have on your business, improving your margins, your scalability, your ability to grow. There is a current court reporter shortage. It is a very real problem and it is limiting the access to justice. So let's navigate this process with you. These modules are going to express the key pain points and key considerations you're going to have to take into account to grow your business. And I hope that that really outlines your next steps. You really want to address any employee resistance, any mis or misconceptions. You want to make sure those are dispelled. You want to find a vendor that's going to walk through this journey with you because it can seem that it's going to be dark and scary, but make sure you pick someone who's going to walk that with you and has done it before. Additionally, the total available market out there that's going to be accessible to digital reporters is only going to grow. So we're looking forward to watching this industry really begin to take off and find its footing and understand that all of these things about them just being button pushers is just fundamentally untrue. The product produced from digital reporters has much more points of quality checking and security than anything else out there. So right. we're really excited to watch this grow. Is that something that you've seen as well? Absolutely. And going back to what we talked about before, there's going to be no choice but to give digital reporters a seat at the table. Um, like you said, access to justice. The, the courts are getting backed up. There's in states where it's not allowed, I mean, there's a crisis happening. There's people who cannot get transcripts. They can't get depositions. They can't get through discovery. And everything is delayed. And this really is the solution. Um, technology, there's always resistance when technology starts to improve. Um, I think pen writers didn't like stenographers. Stenographers didn't like voice writers. And here we are with digital, and it's just another step. And there's always resistance. Yeah, and I can understand why that resistance is scary. So I'm happy we dispelled some of that, knowing that 
digital is going to be at the forefront of technology always. And making sure that it's done ethically and it can scale with your company, I think, is going to be key to your success. Right. And I do want to point out that it doesn't mean that we can't all work together. Um, it doesn't have to be one method and all the other methods are going to go away. It's what we're saying is, is that adding this onto your current business model is really going to help you scale your business. And bottom line is making money when you're in business. Yeah, 100%. And we've addressed the resources, the the source of truth here for digital is going to be the AAERT. There's a wealth of knowledge. Yeah, a great way to start off is try going to a conference. Um, this year, there's a Unity conference with STAR and AAERT. Um, I don't know what's going to happen next year, but it, it go to a conference and meet people, see that digital reporters are real people, see that, you know, the different technologies available. It's it's unbelievable. Every year it changes and leaps and bounds with technology. So. Yeah, I think it also helps with networking and more people are in digital than you think. They just don't openly talk about it. So being at these conferences can really help you see that. It's not as scary as you might perceive out there. Absolutely. Connecting with other people in management who are involved in digital reporting is huge. I mean, I, I learned so much just from being at conferences and networking and meeting different people. Hey, why don't you try it this way? Or we use this vendor. And it's huge. I'm really happy about everything that we covered in our conversations. I'm hoping that this helps somebody feel really comfortable and confident in their next business moves. So thank you so much for sitting and talking to me today. Thank you so much for your insights and what you can offer the digital industry as a whole. You're a valuable asset to it. And you too, Casey. Your technology expertise blows me out of the water every time. And I'm so happy that to be able to work with you. <laughs>